This is an insight clip from the Dr. Geo Prostate Podcast. In this short segment, Dr. Mark Emberton answers a key question in prostate cancer. Do we still need a biopsy when MRI and PSMA PET already show cancer? He explains how modern diagnostics are transforming the path to treatment. For the full interview, episode 86. Click at the end of this clip. Let's get into it. It was a hugely interesting study because it basically told us if your MRI and PSMA are positive, in a set, if you're asking the question, do I have clinically significant cancer? The answer is yes, 100% of the time. So there were no misses. There aren't many zeros in medicine. There aren't many 100% in medicine. Now, admittedly, there were only 24 patients and 54 lesions that were looked at. The numbers weren't huge and nothing in the end is 100%, but that's pretty good. Am I advocating a biopsy-free pathway? No. Will there be a largely biopsy-free pathway in the mm. future? Almost certainly. Uh, with AI, better MRI sequences, and multi-cancer early detection tests from the blood, where we look at fragments of DNA, I, th I think we'll be able to get all the information we need. And remember, we remove a kidney without a biopsy. Huge operation, lots of morbidity. And we do that on probability with a 95% chance of it being a kidney tumor. And we do it with lung as well, actually. A small lung nodule, your smoker, what they do is watch it. And if that nodule gets bigger, you have your lobectomy. So we remove a bit of lung without a biopsy. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really interesting concept. And many men, particularly physicians, always ask, do you think you can treat me without a biopsy? Because they're obviously worried about spread the, of the cancer. Right. You want to share some yeah. thoughts on that? So as you can imagine, Mark, I see these guys yeah. who have concerns about spreading of cancer. So they want me to tell them you don't need a biopsy yeah. is what they really want me to say. They want me to tell them if they know they have a positive biopsy for prostate cancer, well, you don't need treatment. They want me, they want to do natural things. And of course I have to be very responsible with my response. As it relates to spreading of cancer through a biopsy needle, my response is this, and I'm asking you to say, I'm not interested in being right. I'm interested in getting it right. So my response is, it makes theoretical sense that it might happen if you are inserting a needle, no, cancer cell in the prostate, as you retract, there's what's called potential seeding, where now some of those cancer cells are going outside of the capsule. I think it's never been proven, as best as I know, but it makes theoretical sense that might or can happen. Now, that said, I've seen thousands of patients post biopsies and it's really difficult to say if that influenced any recurrence of prostate cancer or any metastasis. What's your response to this notion of spreading prostate cancer through biopsy? I think it's a really biopsy? good question. It's a good question because it's the patients that ask us that question most commonly. And that to me makes it a good question. And I say the same as you. I say we don't know um, because there's no counterfactual because everybody with a cancer diagnosis has had a biopsy eventually, either through a needle or through removal of the organ and confirmation. And mm. there are animal models, that the murine sarcoma model. So that's a mouse sarcoma model where they implant sarcoma. I'm not exactly sure the kind of model it is, but anyway, it's a kind of recapitulation, a recreation mm. of cancer in a small animal. And if you stick needles in that, it, it triggers metastases. So there's something trauma in that particular case that, that kind of tends towards progression or transformation. And there are other cancers, such as kind of kid, not kidney cancers, but what we call urothelial cancers. So the cancers that occur inside the lining of the kidney, that if you stick a needle in the kidney, they tend to track that down. So there are cancers that do that. I agree that we have no evidence that it happens in prostate, though there are a few case reports. If you look hard enough, and some of my patients have, you can find them of cancer cells in the <laughs> rectum, but they are very, very few and far between. Having said that, it's hard to defend, it's hard to imagine that biopsy is a good thing for cancers. Yeah, so if you turn it round, mm. if you had a cancer mm. that was being held in check by the immune system, whether a cancer grows or not is a balance between the cancer's genetic ability to grow and the immune system's ability to keep it in check. And it's like a seesaw. I call yes. it the micro environment, which is what I do. But Gio, wow, this patient's PSA comes down, active surveillance, do a follow-up biopsy, biopsy's negative. What do you do? Do you treat prostate cancer naturally? Well, first of all, the 
second biopsy. I'm always very honest. I want to yeah. say that I treat prostate cancer. Second biopsy could have just missed it. All right, let's have a. But the other thing is that the main um, answer that I give is I'm treating the microenvironment, and through treating the microenvironment, good things tend to happen, and it creates a hostile environment to cancer cells. So the immune system yeah. is a big part of that. So if you yeah, with, I definitely yeah, align with what you're saying. The microenvironment, uh, you create a pro-proliferative inflammatory acute environment and by pro-proliferative i mean you basically change the gearing of the cells to start growing and attract white blood cells in vascular in because it's trauma and that's how all of us are designed to respond to trauma uh, and that's happened over hundreds of thousands of years of genetic evolution is, is that trauma initially initiates an inflammatory mm -hmm. reaction and then a healing process and you would yep. think that because yep. we don't know Right. So it, it could be good for in terms of slowing down cancer growth, but also it could be bad. What I think we could all agree on is that you are changing the microenvironment. And with transrectal biopsies, you're introducing bacteria, mm -hmm. which is another way of changing mm -hmm. the microenvironment. And those bacteria, as we know in prostates, that there is bacterial and viral, bacterial DNA, viral RNA in prostate. So we know that bacteria can reside in the prostate. And most people after adolescence do have evidence of that. And with the transrectal biopsies, which we don't do in the UK anymore, um, uh, you know, introduce bacteria. And these days, some of the bacteria is it can be resistant to to antibiotics. Mark, are you doing mostly transperineal yeah. at this point, and or all transperineal? The last ten years, I think the UK is transrectal <laughs> biopsy free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I don't think I knew that actually. Wow. And there's okay. several reasons for that. The prevalence of multi-resistant E. coli is quite high in the UK and therefore mm -hmm. the risk of sepsis if you go via the transrectal route got unacceptably high and it is quite geographical it's Southeast Asia Australia was very high UK was high and so we switched a long time ago so we're not even using antibiotics now in so we do transperineal biopsies without Amazing. antibiotics in the majority of cases I think you're causing a problem. So much of my audience is, you know, I have quite a few members from the UK, but most of them, of course, are from the US. And they're just going to say, you know what, I'm high risk. I have my PSA. So I'm going to go to the UK and I'm going to find this Dr. Emberton person because I want to get things done there. It seems like, you know, of course, we're in the US, we tend to be a little pompous. We're the best in the world, of course. It seems like we're behind in many things and adopting many of the things that throughout Europe they've adopted be way before us as it relates to stratification and even treatment. Yeah, I worry about, I think I'm going to be a little bit provocative now. So I think transrectal biopsy is substandard care now because by going via the perineum, you avoid infection virtually completely because you suddenly have a sterile field and also you avoid rectal bleeding. Now, you know, rectal bleeding is not normally big, but it can be. And if you hit a hemorrhoid or something, you can have a pretty major bleed requiring a transfusion. And the risk of multi-resistant E. coli is real. And if you get ill with that, uh, it's a life-threatening event. And you just hope that the bacteria responds to the antibiotics that they've got in the hospital. Uh, but septicemia is something that we should try to avoid at all costs. And I think now, to, I certainly wouldn't have a transrectal biopsy, and therefore I couldn't ask my patients to have a transrectal biopsy. Thanks for watching. Catch the full episode on the Dr. Geo Prostate Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss our next insight. We're honored to be part of your prostate health journey.